Welcome to Kellis Coder. Guess what finally came in after four months? A Raspberry Pi Zero W. They are available again. Although still in limited quantities, but they are available. So we know what time it is. Exactly, Pytrex time. tricks <laughs> I can't find my pie tracks after all those months it was a bit of a search but I found it it was stored away very securely in a nice little rubber sack it's always hard to get the rubber off after it's being used right but always use a rubber oh my god it's sticky. Yeah, there we go. So this is the pie tracks, and we need to fit the Pi Zero with the 40 pin header that sticks right on top of this. So it uh, it makes it a bit of a, a 69, right? And then we will create the SD card image with the games on there. So. Let's jump in and have some fun. So this is the Pi Trex and on top goes the Pi Zero. And we will drag solder this header on there. In order to drag solder, you put copious amounts of flux on the pins. So basically you're going to lube it up, lube it up good. Because everything goes better with lube. Now this is no clean flux, this is not really the most ideal. You want a thicker flux for drag soldering, but it will work. So I put some uh, solder on my hot steaming tip and I keep the adding the solder and dragging my soldering iron. You can see it's not as looped up as I wanted with the thicker flux, but there you go. And I'm not sitting in front of it straight because you can see the board I learned from my mistakes. You can actually see it now, but it means that I can hardly see it. And if there's a little bridge, you just add more solder that breaks the surface tension and you check and every now and then you missed a pin and there you go, boom, done. It goes so much faster than individually soldering 40 pins. Now even though this is no clean flux, it is really, really sticky. So clean off the sticky stuff. You don't want the sticky stuff on there. There we go, yes. And then let's tickle your ass with a bristle and then with 69. You go on top, baby. All right, all right, all right. And I will take out my 16 gigabytes because I don't got anything smaller than 16 gigabytes. But you can use your small one because your power tracks won't mind. Size don't matter, said nobody ever. So you download the image from the site. Sorry, by the way, that was my cousin from South Carolina. And then we format the drive according to what is in the awesome documentation. It's one sheet of documentation, but it really covers all the bases. Now that the disk is formatted, we extract the image. It's only 56 megabytes and it even contains all the games already, the Vectrex games, not the arcade. We select all the contents and we just copy it into the root of the newly formatted SD drive. That is as simple as it gets really. And if extracting and copying is even too much work for you, right below is a complete 16 gigabyte image that you can download and you can then copy onto your SSD card. I think this is faster. It's only a couple of hundred files. There we go. All right, so we should be ready. In goes the SD and out comes the Vectrex multi-card, which is really awesome as well. Also contains all the games. And in goes the Pytrex and turn it on. Wow, that's so cool, that voice sample. And look at this opening screen, awesome. So uh, let's see where all the original Factrex games are. They are bundled on this image. It was a bit of a search, but it's in a logical place. You go to the Factrex menu, you go down, you go past all the uh, homebrews and new games, the exact Factrex, you go down, and here you have all the uh, homebrews again, and here are all the original ROMs. And they are all there because they relinquished the rights to the games so you can uh, distribute them. 
Unlike the arcade games, and that is what this thing can also do, they modified certain arcade games that it is now simulated. So uh, that is awesome. And even though it's uh, emulated, it really runs nicely, as you can see. And there is another very cool feature, because when you press all the four buttons at the same time, it resets the game. You can uh, save progress, I always ignore it, and then you can select another one. It's so much more convenient than pressing the reset for the uh, Vectrex multi-card. But the real awesome feature is that you can emulate real arcade cabinets. But those files need to come from main 229 version and need to be exact these sizes. Because they are basically going to be patched. And that was a bit of a hunt for me to find the right size. It's always this. Now finding the 229 ROMs is not easy, it's a really old release. So this was a quest that was harder than finding the holy grail. So one at a time I downloaded them, checked their sizes and tested them. And I still not have everything working that I want. I'm looking for Star Wars, I have not found that yet. But a lot of it is working, even Tempest. And I am a massive Tempest fan. So let me show you how that looks. Now most of my ROMs are installed, there's not the message no ROM available below. It will be listed there. So this is the right version of the ROM and the right size. So yeah, there we go. It is actually playing. Now in the menu it's not really that snappy, but in the game it is. It is really cool and this sets the Pytrex apart from the uh, Vectrex multi-card. You can actually emulate real game cabinets. It simulates the input and the output and it just emulates it. It's really awesome. Imagine telling me in 1982 you can actually play Atari Tempest on a Vectrex. I would have nagged my parents even more for a Vectrex, which they never got on me. In complete 2023 mindset I should sue my parents for e emotional damage by not getting a Vectrex. But I got one now, including the Pytrex and it's bloody awesome and I'm happy with it. So there you have it. We soldered some headers onto a uh, Pi Zero with drag soldering. We make it a, a nice 69 uh, position. We created the SD card, which was a very straightforward process. Very well documented. Really awesome uh, Pytrex uh, team. Great stuff. And yeah, it works. The only thing that is a challenge is hunting down the right version of the arcade ROMs. And it needs to be the right version, which makes sense because they probably patch them as they run to work with the input and output systems of the Vectrex uh, to emulate them. Now the big question is, why would you use a uh, Vectrex multi-card or a Pytrex? Uh, the Vectrex multi-cards are very useful, I love them. Uh, they contain also all the Vectrex games, just like the image already does for the Pytrex because they actually open source or they relinquished the rights to all the games uh, for the Vectrex. That's why they can legally put them on these things. Um, the, if you just are into Vectrex games, then the Vectrex multi-card will just do fine. It's a little bit cheaper because you don't need a Pi Zero and the Pytrex is really when you want to do that arcade stuff, uh, explore the homebrew stuff and develop yourself because then you can just take out the little SD card, write your code, compile it, put it on there and play it. So that's basically the reason why you have these two different cards. I like them both a lot, um, but I think that this will now become my uh, daily driver, the Pytrex. Uh, I can't wait for the weather to get bad, to actually do some coding on the Vectrex, uh, make a very little game, a uh, very little simple game or something like that. So can't wait for the weather to turn uh, bad, finally getting to the winter. So uh, yeah, I hope you learned something and I hope to see you in the next one. Vectrex rules.